All right. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. So before Bless we start, we for just do, like introduction, you know. Um, will they see the screen? Yeah. yeah. How? Bless how? Will they see everybody? Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. That's cool. So, we'll see them one in cubes. All right. <laughs> so how we we'll do them now? Okay. So maybe we'll just start now. Um, the man for Accra. Introduce yourself. Not the one with the uh, okay. the one without the cap. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'm I'm Jeffrey Otu. Uh, I'm an MFA student from KNUST, and I'm part of the Asafo Black Collective, and I'm an artist, and I work in mo uh, mostly paintings and installations. All right. Cool. Cool. And uh, the man for Frankfurt. Hello, um, I'm Larry Bonchaka, and um, I am an artist. I work with uh, different forms, and um, I'm from Ghana, and I'm part of the Asafo Black Collective. Yeah. And um, it's nice to join this talk. Oh, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, the second yeah. guy from Ghana, from Accra. Okay. Bless up. Um, I go by the name Scraper. Um, I'm part of the Asafo Black Collective. Um, I do a, um, exploring graffiti. So my, my art form is more of graffiti. Yep. And yeah. Okay. Um, I think maybe. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. So London. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, Umon, for having us. Uh, my name is Nuna Adisenudo. I'm, I'm an artist and part of the Asafo Black Collective. Um, I'm currently uh, pursuing an MA degree in arts market and appraisal, professional practice in Kingston University, London, okay. and uh, alumni of KNUST, painting and sculpture department. OK. Yeah. All right. Um, so if, if two people can help me, eh? one person, because you are a collective of um, six. Yeah. So if one, yeah. if one person each, just introduce the two people that are not here. Okay, so um, Samo Bankote is um, an artist and he lives in Ghana and uh, that's where he works as well. So he's connected to um, spaces like Black Star Lines and Asafo Black. And he works with the, the Kumasi Abattoir. Okay. And um, he sees that place more like a studio and his works take more of the form of um, religious sculptures. And yeah, that's some more. Okay. Mm. So, and can we talk about Denise too? Yeah, but somebody else was talking about Denise. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so Denise is also an artist. Uh, she studied uh, at the KNUST, but uh, she she majored in communications design. Uh, so what so what what she currently does is uh, she works mainly digital mediums, but sometimes it extends into like installations and other forms. Uh, she's usually interested in um, how to uh, manipulate that what's it called uh, the digital medium. And to by, by taking everyday pictures of uh, landscapes and you know fusing them with some futuristic or, or out of the world uh, objects and you know yeah features of the sort. All right, so everybody, uh, I welcome you as as, as a for black. Um, as me, I'm a, I'm an observer, right? And I've been observing you as a collective, and it's inspiring. You know, so before we just start, I think I just let you know, say, uh, I'm really, really impressed, you know, and I think as we have this conversation, you would um, just hear more of my observation and, and we'll see how it goes. But also, before we continue, this is not an art talk, oh, you understand? Uh -huh. this, okay. is about, this is about the journey, you know, so for me, yeah. my conversations are about journey and, and, and movement you know, about, about who we are, you know, where we're coming from, where we are currently, and, and where we're trying to connect to, you know. So um, it's, it's about life, you know. So, um, and within the life world that they live, 
there's art in it, you know, but also you are human beings, everyday life, day inside. So my first question is, um, so between Larry, if, if you can yeah. remember, um, you have, there are two, four of you here now, the three of them. Can you remember your earliest memory of each person here? Um, yes. Um, Nina, we've been in the class since. And Denise, I knew her from primary. And so, okay, my first memory with Nuna. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think we met, we met Taquins in a French room, Katie's room. Yeah. yeah, and I think he was half drunk or something like that. <laughs> Sell out. <laughs> you get Wow. wow! Yeah, wow. yeah. You never class safe. <laughs> no, 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 no. We were never met in class. <laughs> I wish class were you in again. Which class were you in again? Every day painting and sculpture. No, I, that was the first time I met you. Not, not in yeah. the class. By the way, yeah, Nuna was in my class. <laughs> but, but, but Nuna you was in my met, class. But you guys, first of all, you you met outside of your class. Yeah. Okay, um, well, this is this, a uh, this, uh, this, uh, fake story, but the real story is, <laughs> the real story is, yeah, we met in class, uh, but the first day was more like an orientation of um, our professors and things like that, it was more of that, and then uh, figure drawing class, we used to work together, like do stuff together yeah. with bar as well, so that's where the whole action started started working together and like we were just ambitious and we just found ourselves like working together exploring things we've had so many exhibitions together Nuna and I so many collaborations that are not uh, like we started that when we we're in third year okay. and um, yeah we've been working since yeah and yeah I think one thing connected to the other bar, like, yeah, so I think with Jeffrey too, I met him, uh, we're doing some businesses at the back door. <laughs> hey, yeah. this is a low-key business, we can never come yeah. out, I beg you. <laughs> lowest, 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 lowest. Lowest key, I beg you. Yeah, like but you. we've been linking up, um, two parties and ex like we've just been connecting in that sense i think everyone has a very interesting first memory of each one of us yeah, yeah i think yeah. jeffrey jeffrey has a very good one yeah, yeah maybe jeffrey, jeffrey. about the first time you met nuna yeah, yeah, jeffrey, let's hear yeah. <laughs> ah but nuna, the first time the first time i met nuna I met Nuna when he was in Bunai. I think yeah. so. They were having, they were having a, a, a drink up over there. Uh, I think we went for his birthday or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we, 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 we went there. So I just I met Nuna. And Nuna was like, this guy is like extra friendly and things like offering me uh, uh, drinks and those type of stuff. Like, yeah. So I was like, hey, this guy is quite kind. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then we, we really officially like met again again um when I was in third year. He he became my roommate. Okay. And from then oh, wow. yeah, okay. that's when we became like tight friends. Okay. Yeah, so we stayed together. So we actually know how like each other we are we ever since like we stayed together, we never had a quarrel or anything. We never at all um, vibes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Same, yeah. same, same, same with Larry. I don't think we ever had a crowd. Larry, have you nah. ever had a crowd? Nah. nah, I don't. Okay, we'll, we'll see. We'll go see for you. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Um, the 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 scraper, scraper. Where did I meet you? Uh, no, 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 no. I want to ask scraper a question. Uh -huh, uh, scraper, can you remember yes. the first time the six of you all shared the same space? <laughs> Um, I would say outside of would say, outside of exhibition, outside of um, the outside public, the six of you. 
Private. First time. Wow. <laughs> First of all, I'm, I'm kind of like... Okay. Um, hello? Oh, shit. Question again. Yeah. So, Scraper. Yes, sir. Sorry. Um, my internet cut off, so we'll just continue from where we stopped. So, Scraper, I was asking, can you remember your first time sharing uh, space with the six of you? Yeah, and you asked if it was outside an exhibition because yes, I yeah. remember me. Yeah, it, it, it was still in an You see, the funny thing is that this is like a lifestyle, you understand? Because ever since I got to the university, when I got to the university, my classmates were Larry, Nuna, and Ba, you understand? And um, later we had Jeffrey come to join the course, and we understand that, yeah, he was a G. You could see the guy was a G from the beginning, so it <laughs> was a vibe. And I think I didn't really know Denise till um, when I got to my national service and I, and I met Denise, you understand? But you see, out of all of them, I'm kind of like the one that doesn't really hang out with a bunch. I'm, I'm always hiding out somewhere, you understand? But the few times, I, 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 I'll say the first time I actually saw the crew and I fell in love with Asafo Blackwood after my, my first exhibition in Kumasi. They wanted to go and get yeah. food. And I remember I was quite late. And they had to go and buy food from Bantama or somewhere like that. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro, was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was so Charlie. They were so determined. I don't know what they want to eat. They were... You eat buys there. What, what do you want to eat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, that lies if it's true too. Ever since I wanted Detroit. to go back. Charlie, Bar has never taken us back there again. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I don't know if you guys remember, but like Jeff, you remember as we they can't go the Mantama, like yeah. then we did other Uber way, the, the Ubers all the council on we, yeah, and then, like three or four Ubers, they all council on this, and finally one came in, like eventually two kids there. So, so with this, with this, with this um line, is it scrape up? Were you the last to join the group? I think so. I think I, I think I was the last person, more or less. I don't know. Okay. Like, it's between me. I have to. I don't know. That. I do now have to say that. Okay. So who was who was the last to join the group? It wasn't. I don't. It wasn't like really about. You know. So 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 the way we all came together. Yeah. It's not as if like. It's not as if yeah, someone was like, like the that. first, yeah. second, third, fourth, and the like, like no, last no, no, no. person. The reason, the reason I'm asking, I'm, I, I know you, I know you people do not move conventionally, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. This. But the reason I ask that question is, I'm curious about the conversation. Who, yeah. who identifies Scraper like, hmm, this guy has our vibe. Hmm, this guy would compliment us. Like, that conversation is what I'm curious about. Yeah. So, so you know, like, how you... How when you get when you get into like high school or like uni, yeah, you sort of like just like recognize or know the kind of people you are going to roll with, like Definitely. eventually. Yeah. yeah, it's the same way like in in the art school, you know the kind of people whose works like sort of gravitate towards yours or like you mm -hmm. sort of like have a feeling with theirs. You get it, or you sort of understand the way they work with, or you work in the same space with them. So it's just mm -hmm. like that sort of like you know like chemistry that moves through every one of us. But I think. It was like a conscious decision to like actually bring Denise because we know she was also interested in the sort of conversations we're having about art and like you know okay. like showing and working and all that stuff. So yeah, okay. it didn't it wasn't actually like you know this person joined and joined, but I think the first time we all came together when was when we decided to have like the vibes exhibition. Okay, okay, yeah. But okay. We've been working like you know together, and Denise also worked on one of our exhibitions like earlier on. Scraper also we did, we, we collaborated to work on Scraper's exhibition. Okay. So you know it's yeah it's a lot of places. So so now um the the tricky thing here is that one I I understand that you guys are artists I understand that you uh you all studied artists I understand this but there are not a lot of references when it comes to young artists forming collectives. There's not mm. a lot, right? 
And, and when we just come, and I'm bringing it down to Ghana and, and West Africa, the region, right? So what gives you that push to say, hey, we can, we can be solo artists, but we can do something also that would inspire other artists, those before us and those even after us. Like, how, how, did, how did you guys build the Asafu Black identity? Like, still, you are building it, but how did that start? Uh, and Larry, Larry, do you do you want to jump on this first? Um, nah, not nah. <laughs> I can't leave this conversation. I think I think you let yeah. me let me let me let me let me get it. Uh, so let me see. I think you know it's 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 sort of like ambition, you know, like from school. I think we we all wanted to make it, you know. We didn't want to like slack. We didn't want to like finish school and go and sleep at home or fall yeah. into like another profession. Mm -hmm. We wanted to like make it by all means. Like, like the determination was like there, was was prominent. So it was it was just like, you know, there wasn't like a lot of opportunities where we could like, you know, get into to like maybe show work, sell work, that or that kind of thing. So it's, it's we actually, still like that. Yeah, we actually wanted to do it ourselves, you know, like we literally put it on ourselves to like whatever the art world or what whoever the art players were and, and the sort of things they did, like do exhibitions, art mm -hmm. talks, like, you know, other like experimental projects, like, you know, reach out projects and, you know, social programs and all that things, those things. We wanted to also do that ourselves, you know, because the, that... Or, or, or the sort of idea or the perseverance we had was, you know, if we could all collaboratively come together, put our resources, resources like capital and everything together, we could actually make it work. Yeah, you know, but, so. but then, then where does this non-conformist nature come from? You, you know, because first of all, I know there's determination. I have heard each of you and I've seen you. I know you people are working like constantly. Uh, but yeah. now asking, if, if you're looking at the industry, right, and the art world mm -hmm. is a very, for me, this is my per uh, 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 perception of it, it's very, very narrow, you know, and, and mm -hmm. artists are not, but when you come into the art space, like, it's, it's very, and a lot of people try to break that, right? But where, where, where is that sample black non-conformist nature coming from? Especially, let me, let, me, let me put another nuance to that. Especially yeah. knowing that in Ghana, in Accra, and within the art space in Ghana, it's, it's very clicky, it's very, it's, it's they, you, there are circles, you know, there, there are little circles around, and, and you people decided that you are not going to be a part of any, you are not, you, and even within the Asapo Black movement, it's like you people don't care. You know, you can support anybody, you cannot support anybody, you can do anything. And that's very unique. Yeah. I... <laughs> yes. Um, so, you see, me, I, I, I like to, I'm, I'm quite picky with the people I, 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 I team up with. Because I grew up, I, I half, half of my life was, was, I grew up in Nigeria, you understand? And Nigeria, mm -hmm. if you did get like this now, you know, if you work with any kind of person, because half of the person I'm not about, half of the people are like this. Meeting these guys, I felt like everybody was an influence at their point. You see, because you could see Luna had something he was doing. You see, Jeffrey was on his jacket. We were pushing so many stuff that you could see that the act we had within us was the only thing we were not able to give our friends, our family, like... That was the one thing we had not pushed out here, but we had so much love for it, you understand? So it's like coming together made it extra strong for us to give people that act, that like, it's like right now, the way it's evolving, so many people are looking at it like, I tell you, this thing is wrong. But from our side, we give you another narrative to mm -hmm. what art is all about. You see, like the collective, yeah. like come to our world, come and enjoy it. Like we know how to give it to yeah. you. So it was like, <laughs> it's still the same message, but it's more like it's a vibe. You see, so anytime yeah. we are even we are laughing. We yeah, really yeah, are laughing. but see, this yeah. is this this I like this your answer, but I'm asking where does the fuck you come from? Like 
the fucking nature that it's, it's have. from it's from the <laughs> crisis we find ourselves in. Yeah, like we find like, ourselves in these situations. So I think we act with in response. It's like a call and response thing. It's like a need. It. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah. a rebellion. It's like a rebellion against the system. Oh, you people, yeah. you people are aware of this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it it is it's, yeah. it's intentional. It's okay. what capitalism it's is doing. Okay. It's like the foundation of us. Yeah. Like, it's intentional. Okay. It's and supposed to. I feel the movement mm, is supposed to disrupt. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, I think also maybe I don't know, but you it's know, to, it's anyway. to also subvert. Yeah. Subvert. You know, when we are all in like you know uni year, like in our undergrad studies, I think like we're in this sort of like everyone was in this sort of community. So even now, like people who you realize like people who went to like uni, like uh, like the the artists who went who were like, like painting and sculpture department, like we all sort of had like this sort of like community like spirit, you know, like together. We used to like maybe help each other on anyone's work or like come together to support one person to do something. And I feel like also like that or that black star like spirit, you know, like to or to get up and do things on your own or like to go out of your comfort zone to like, you know, do things, you know. And we didn't really see a lot of like things to like rely on or structures to rely on to get things done. So it was out of like the order necessity that for the training, like the resources mm. we, we, or we got from school, like all the materials, all those things, you know, it came together and was like just, you know, explosive. So I had to just, as somebody who has worked with different creatives and also creatives within um, collectives, ego is, is, is one thing that fucks everybody up, whether individually or as a team. I, I feel like maybe I'll use toxic ego because I think mm-hmm. everybody needs a little ego here and there. You understand? And how, how do you... Is this a conversation that you people are aware of? Is this a conversation you are having... How do we make sure that our individual ego does not destroy where the, the collective is heading? You know, I, 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 let me, let me, yeah, yeah, like, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's also about communication. Like, it's about constant conversations with people. We talk about things. Like, we are more than just artists. I, I don't really like the idea of people categorizing us more like artists we are co- like we are more like a corporation yeah so we we work together and we share certain emotional things too yeah so it's yeah maybe on the screen or something we may we may be identified as individual artists but we share something so i think ego like there's no there's always positive vibes in the room do you get it yeah yeah so i think we we nurture it it's not easy yes it's something that we nurture i'm not going to call it off that yo that we don't see you we nurture it so i think there's there's a need to continue nurturing it yeah do you get it yeah because yeah. it's bigger than any of us and we respect that idea. You get it, because we yeah. are thinking about the future. So there's no time really for negative ego and things like that. But like as I said, you have to nurture it. That's really it. that's how we deal with it as uh, people, as human beings. Yeah. Also, I think uh, Omon, I want to give you like this like pretext here. Yeah? yeah. So that you would understand like. Like, I understand that the question about, like, the ego complex or whatever. So, you know, like, how, like, you know, like, years before, maybe, like, 20 years ago, like, 30 years ago, like, artists in Ghana, like, you know, everyone had, like, yo, like, maybe I am Kofi, like, Kofi yeah. the artist. Yeah. You had Kofi the artist, you had Ama the artist, and it was, like, Kofi's work, Ama's work, Kwame's work, and it was, like, the artist's work. Yeah. But this is the yeah. point where, like, from school, you know, we had to, like, learn from each other. So like I was learning from Larry, learning from Scraper, Jeffrey, Samuel. Like but, yeah. we were also learning Likewise. from ideas. We are sharing ideas to create things. Like so if maybe I realized like Scraper's work and that's we understood each other's work. 
So yeah. I realized maybe scrapers work needed a certain like you know other other eye or view to it, you know, like another another view to like look at scrapers work or look at Larry's work in a different sense. I could give Larry that like you know advice, or like we could just like you know like read a book or watch a movie that could influence something. And I'll point it out to Larry or to Jeffrey or to someone else. So like when you're developing like when we are developing a practice, it wasn't about scrapers practice, like you know, he carried it as like a, a goal or a trophy, or Larry's practice and Larry's work carried as a trophy. Like as equally as important Larry's work was to him, it was also important to me that you know I saw like you know what his work thrived to a certain level. You understand? So as much as Larry is the owner of his work, we are all collectively owners of the work too, in in mm. in, the, in the sense of you know how we come together to create that thing. So you find out like maybe Jeffrey sees something about my work, or even about the practice, not necessarily about the work, about how you approach certain things. You know, we work together, so it doesn't end up like this is Samuel's work or this is Scraper's work, the big graffiti there, and that Scraper's work or this is Larry's, you know, big, huge installation. So there's nothing like ego among us, yeah. Like, um, it, it's, it's good to hear. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I believe we all have egos, right? And, yeah. and one of oh, what I'm hearing Zoom from, call. what I'm hearing from- um, uh, Zoom meeting. Is that, uh, can, can, uh, are you doing something? Yeah, okay. what I'm hearing from you, you hold your finger if you're back. Eh? What I'm hearing from you people now is that there is a conscious effort to make sure that this doesn't become a problem. You know, it's it's also when when you were speaking, I was just thinking about something that um, Kendrick, uh, Schoolboy Q, and and that collective Black EP, yeah. what they do. Like if Schoolboy Q has almost is done with his album, he sends it to Kendrick Lamar because he is like the very critical, very, very in the studio, making sure that everybody's work is good, right? So, yeah. so they do that, you know? So it's what I'm hearing. What I'm hearing now is that you all make sure that whatever anybody is doing, you know, it, it comes out, it comes out, better and stronger so it is it, it, that that also is selfless because um whenever you hear young whenever you hear disruptive whenever you hear all of those things you do not hear a lot cooperative which is what larry uh, pointed out you do not hear that a lot you do not hear support a lot you do not hear selflessness a lot you know and and it, it, this is these are the things that are standing you guys out of all of this so for me, I just want to ask a question. Um, just let's go back to our childhood. You know, let's go back to our childhood. Um, I don't know if if you grew in in a home, family, and everything. Um, when did you discover art as a kid? When, like, when did, when did it ring? And I said, oh, this is art. Or when did you start seeing things from an artistic perspective? Um, Scraper, you can, you can go first. All right. See, my own name, my own is, is quite funny. You do anything to me apart from let me do art. You understand? Because it all started for me drawing from the back of my book. You understand? And... But what, always, what, around what time? What age was that? As, as, I, as early as, if I can remember, I'll be like three years old, four years old. Okay. See, so I heard I was drawing, I, was, I heard I was drawing before that, you understand? It's like, I had so many, I had so many of things that I'd be like the, the, the different child in the family because we are just three, we are just three, you understand? And I was like, I even thought I was the bad egg. You understand, like when you become that bad, and you see, growing up in Nigeria, you have to be hard. You have to be hard because I was in Lagos, I was in Ikeja. I sometimes I'll spend my money just to walk on the road and see what is happening in Lagos. Like I could tell you what is happening from Allen Runabout to Okwebi, the street life. 
buying magazine, buying Sega magazine from Mr. Biggs and all that. You see, it's like my, my movement was just going differently. You understand? And it looked abnormal to, I think, till I got to the university. Let me put it like that. Till I got to the university and thanks to um, my lecturers and um, caricature and the rest, you, you have them let you understand that now nah, this, this thing you think is abnormal, it's your, it's your identity or that's your normalness, if, I'm, if I can say that word. You understand? Like, this is what makes you the perfect person or this is what makes you you. You understand? So grow it better. You see? So it's like, that's how come you have me leaving my beard. You have me standing for something people don't stand for. You understand? Giving them my own narrative and all that. So I feel like it's, it's from my childhood. For me, it's, it's always been with me from bed. Oh, okay. Um, um, no, no, I don't know if you want to add to that. Uh, well, like, my own experience. Yes, your own experience, yes. I think, well, uh, my earliest experience would be, uh, I think it wouldn't be like a particular, like maybe timeline, but I think uh, from J JSS, Junior, junior secondary school, junior high school, whatever, yeah. From JSS, like my, or like my older brother, like the firstborn in my family, we, we, are, we, are, we are siblings of three. So okay. like my, the firstborn, um, Omado, he was like a really good, like, you know, like painter and like he used to like illustrate very well. Like he used to like know how to draw like very realistically if I would, yeah. So he was someone like I used to really look up to, even his handwriting was like, perfect he could like adapt to different like you know type fonts like calligraphy uh italics like different styles so it was someone i used to i really used to admire growing up because i used to see how he did his things very like meticulously like arranged stuff so yeah. i used to live in the room with, also with him so like I, I looked up to him so i think i just you know like you know if you have like that sort of like uh, an idol figure if I put like someone used to look up to and follow all the time, then you just like, you know, try to imitate what he does. Yeah. So I think then I, you know, I, I grew more like, you know, acclimatized to it. And I told my dad I wanted to do visual arts and my dad was very like supportive. My family is very supportive. So like I went to, visual, I did like my visual arts in Presec. I later went to tech. So like those were the earliest moments. And I also remember I did this drawing of like this car. I used to like drawing cars. I couldn't get to like always right, but I remember this particular time I spent a lot of time and drew like the the hammer or, or the ham V, like the hammer two vehicle. So <laughs> I traced it out and when I when I finished I took poster colors and I painted it. It was so nice. It was like one of the best things I ever had in the room. Yeah. And I used to always play in my hall, like my father's hall. So I think he came back from work and saw it and was also like really happy. So he framed it and put it in like in the living room. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, but I got to, I think when I got to like SS and I came back home one time and I saw the drawing, I was so like disappointed in myself. <laughs> because I realized, because, yo. Because you had advanced at that. Oh, exactly. Okay. So I knew I could do better. So like, I think I, we, we took it out of the frame and like we put something else there. Like, that's what but, but, but that's something about movement, right? Well, we just look at movement because as you move sometimes, you don't see how far you've gone, but there are moments that yeah. actually stand out and you know that, oh, okay, I've moved actually from point. Because the, the distance between point A and B, you can not a lot of people can calculate it, are aware of it, but certain things make you understand that you've moved from A to B. Um, Larry, there is, there, is, there is this carefreeness that you bring, eh? and the first time I saw you, I think somebody was like, There's oh, Larry, words. carefreeness. Care carefree. 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 Yeah, yeah. There's this carefreeness you bring. And, and I remember the first time I met you, someone was like, oh, Larry's carefree, anything. I said, no. I can see this person. He is, he's very aware. He knows who he is. You might think he's carefree, but he's very aware. Nothing is escaping his eyes. Nothing is escaping his vision. Is very, very, very much aware of the things happening around him. How do you balance that? I think I just I just learned this. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I think 
I just I just learned to live. Uh, <laughs> am I carefree, guys? Am I yeah. carefree? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think so. You have a, a, free, a free mind. Yeah, I have a free mind. I try in the to. sense of maybe he's he's very liberal and he like yeah. he's yeah. open to a lot of ideas. He's open it's, to like everything. Yeah, but but I I also feel like this is this is all like I said from the beginning. My observation of as I feel black and this is where my questions are coming mm. from. You, I feel like there are people who are very open just because they are following people or just because, you know, they don't really have that time to think. But I feel like um, Larry is someone who has, who has thought about what he wants to do. He's open to anything that is coming. Like, and it's a very hard thing to do, to balance knowing what you want to do, but also being open to um suggestions and and just different views yeah i think it's it's really one and the same in that sense because what i want to do is also to open up to other collaborations and other people and other ideas so i think it's it's all in one it's all in the same one and the same and um yeah, it's it's really hard to explain, but it's one and the same. Like it's the same thing. Um, I like to work with people who want to work. Like you know, I'm I'm interested in cultural innovation, and um, in that sense, um, how people try to tell stories. I'm I'm into storytelling, yeah. and I feel that that's also one of the ethos of Asa for Black. It's about that idea of um, storytelling in that sense and also that's what i'm saying it's it's like a it's, it's a corporation so the whole thing also acts also in the form of an institution so we have these kind of projects that we have like black seed oh. and we go into these we go into jeff yeah you go feel mute yeah you go feel mute um uh, i'm on a zoom meeting yeah continue yeah um so it be like it's more about um getting into the community and also um opening up new ideas new people and i feel that's but that's how we grow as yeah as people and i think um that's where the balance you can you can speak of a balance also but it's, it's a it's, it's a thriving situation like day in day out we try and push and things like that um i see um like scripa he's intro like he's introduced a lot of the new generation into graffiti so you go on certain walls you see that he's a, like he's inspiring so that's how we get into things we share ideas with people people also share ideas with us he's working with uh, roxy he's a martial artist uh, in Ghana and they've been collaborating on certain projects and he works with um, like so the collaboration is very open for us and I think that's one thing about myself I'm open to very innovative ideas especially the ones that kind of um, support the culture okay so um, yeah yeah yeah, and I was speaking about the Black Seed. Um, this project, um, it comes with this other um, joint project, which is um, the Mobile Library. Mm. So um, this is something that we are working on. We want to create this um, space um, in different spaces where we could um, mount this library for people to come and relax and read engage in conversations i think um we we need this kind of spaces in the world yeah so we are looking forward to launch it um probably next year so and, these and, are and the mobile library you're talking about is the asapo black mobile library um I don't no, call no, it Asa for Black. I'm saying, I'm saying it's from your collective or it's a collaborative project with another... Yeah, yeah. 
uh, yeah, it's it's the collective project. Yeah, okay. it's a collective okay. project. Yeah. Okay. 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 So yeah. let me let me say something. I was in Hamburg, right? And I went okay. to the, the art school there, right? They had yeah. they had um an exhibition. The entire school had an exhibition, right? And and as I was moving through the exhibition, I just I I was just like the only people I can think of about is Asako Black. Like, For real. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, because it was so, um, I don't nice. know how to put it. it. It was just like, see. What about go, it? Yeah. You, you go into some um, exhibitions and you know that the carefreeness was designed to look carefree. Or the disruptiveness was designed to be destructive. It's not like the people who are designing this are disruptive. Because for me, there's a point where the work and the artist, you cannot really remove it from, from, from them, right? The practice itself yeah. is a way of life. And entering yeah. that school and seeing that, it's like they're giving the students this freedom to just yeah. be exactly what they want to be. And nothing in particular made me think of you guys, but it, it just... That was the energy I felt, you know, that energy of, no, we are going to just do whatever we want to do. So my question, what this leads me to is, who or which people within the collective controls admin? Because admin is, is a very important part of a collective. Like Larry said, you're a corporation. So who, co who controls admin? Who, who writes letters? Who, who says, no, this is, the, this is the terminology we should use? When, when, when you are replying, a proposal who says that when a proposal comes for a uh, maybe an exhibition or collaboration how do you say okay are we voting we like this we don't like this like how does that work um i think uh, myself and um, and then nuna um work on some things and uh, the letters and then um ba also works on the letters and admin as well, uh, social media, also Jeffrey handles social media. Like, I think we, the, the roles are in touch, like they are very plastic, like someone can, but then I think uh, most of the time it's recurring, especially with admin. Yeah, it's mostly Nuna who does the admin, yeah. Yeah, so has there, has there ever been a time and this is, this is me just coming from an honest place. Has there ever been a time where a project did not represent one of you? Even if you're a part, even when you're a part of the project, has there ever been a time where you had to say yes because the majority said yes? Um, no, Larry, Larry, wait first. I want to hear from somebody else. Somebody yeah. else before Larry speak. Jeff, Jeff, Jeffrey. Yeah, uh, is that uh, was there a time that the uh, what? Has there ever been a time where the project is dope, the vibe is dope, but you said yes because everybody said yes? Um, I should think. Uh, let's put it. Oh, are we? Hmm. It's quite hard because, like, with all the projects, I've like, uh, like, agreed to it. But just one project that hadn't happened yet, it has not happened. Okay. Uh, that, yeah, that, that particular project, I don't think everybody was really with it. But everybody was like, maybe because it's an opportunity, we should just go for it. But not everybody's heart was in it like that. But since that project has not really materialized, yeah, that that's about it. Yeah, it was. One project like that. All right. And so, 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 which leads me to my next question. And anybody, the four of you can answer this in your own way. Um, when we have that, when we have, because at, we are within a family, and I think you people are building a chosen family. This, this is how I look at Ataku Black. This is your chosen family. And within that, there are little, uh, um, um, would I say, perspective. Like, oh, this is what I think about this. So 
when we all agree to do this and we know that maybe one person it's not a hundred percent you know um in support or in tune with the idea how do you make sure that even while that project is happening how do you make sure that that person is catered for in a way that they understand that even if you are not 100 percent for this you are still within this and you represent this you know i i, I think here yeah, i understand what you're saying so you know the thing is yeah usually some someone like maybe we or we sit together or out of like a conversation it comes up we need to do this then we tell the other people they're on board but sometimes maybe larry brings something up or i bring something up i'll give an instance we we, we had this project we had to do so like i was the one who like uh, sort of like negotiated or dealt with like the people organizing the project and i brought it to us for black and they were like nah they don't think this is the time so i went back and i was like okay if you don't, if you like you don't think this should happen like let's just chill but I was there again i was like no i think i need to prove a point so you know it's up to the person who brings the idea to prove their point to like convince the people you know? yeah so it's like oh, now it's my responsibility yeah. to convince you guys like to pull your hands and tell you like yo i'm showing you this open your eyes and see like let's do it you understand and at that point then you know old old like you know old old generate or spark a response like nah this thing this is why i think this, these are these are like our beliefs and we know all our all our beliefs like you know so if like we brings an idea and it's like no 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 you're not doing this one he will even, he will even bring that idea but if there's supposed to be that sort of conversation whether let's do it or let's not do it then the person who proposes it should be the one to defend it and to like you know convince mm -hmm. the rest of us to like get on it yeah it has also happened to uh, maybe the titles of the exhibitions too. I remember like the, the first, uh, the one we had in, at the National Theatre, Vibes, the first one. It, it was supposed to be called, uh, mm -hmm. I think, I Intenso or something yeah, like that. Yeah, Intenso. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> that one was, uh, was a slight <laughs> war over there. So I, I said, I was yeah. like, you needed a name that will, eh? will because eh? you are starting. <laughs> yeah. We need a name that will, that, that will resonate with a lot of people, a lot of like young people yeah. from the start. Yeah. And at that time, I felt like Intenso like, didn't really fit. Like, Intenso should be like maybe the name of the third exhibition we'll do. Like, Bob, like, I, I, I saw that it was like it was the hierarchy hard, of yeah. It. yeah, it was too hard. And it would make people not like understand and stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I came up with the name Vibes. And I was like, Charlie, and this time it was like, it was, a, it was a term that was running at the time. And everybody, I saw that everybody in the collective had this like uh, particular vibe about them. Everybody had. So I had to explain the, the reason like why I bought it, the, the name Vibes. And <laughs> that's when everybody agreed with me. But at first, there was a, like a slight problem. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's 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 amazing. I think this this is where um, this is where you you begin to see um, how uh, what, what will I say now? How you can work in terms of um, Luna? Are you sharing two screens? Okay, wait, just one minute. Yeah, can, can, laptop. Can, Hello? Did they hear me? Yeah, but we can't hear oh, you. Yeah, we know they hear you. Okay, just, just a try. When we hear you, we'll let you know. Um, so it comes back to communication. It comes back to the idea of being very transparent and open, you know? Uh, and and like, like Larry said, like, removing that ego you know and so it means that you can you can fight you can you can argue but you know that it's it's out of making the collective better you know yeah I, yeah. yeah so i wanted to mention one thing that happened here yeah, last year it just we had we had a fuse last year which was very interesting because last year i had a solo exhibition at carbon 
And after that, we are supposed to do our main exhibition, the collective exhibition, um, Truth or Truth or um, Truth or Dare. And um, I wasn't fully ready because of the graffiti. I had to because of graffiti, you have to plan. But um, Luna brought up this idea, and that's what you see. That's why I want to reference to what Luna said in the beginning. Because we know our works, we know each other's works so well that we can always find somehow to fuse ourselves between each other and. Um, help the other person grow or you see form to the person's work you understand so Luna brought up a fuse where I could fuse with his work at this performance the exhibition which also gave me a new idea to exhibit on that day so even whilst you you don't think you can do it or you are not fully ready because of the collective the friendship the ideas you guys share together there's still like an extra way to find yourself in the midst of it you understand you know what I'm saying, though. Yeah, definitely. So that's, that's definitely. that happened. Definitely. Do you do you people think age has anything to do with the way um, you you are transcending within the art space? Um, which uh, in terms of uh, like in terms of like age, I think um, yep. the we all I have. Ask, sorry, the reason I asked. Every time I hear um, Asafu Black, it's always, oh, the young collective of young artists, you know? Yeah. And, and for me, I do, not, I do not regard age at all because for me, I feel like if you're fearless, you're fearless, you know? If you go for it, you go yeah. for it. But I want to know your opinion. Yeah, I think um, age is always going to be inside because it's about growth so like ages you can't really take age out of it and um, we acknowledge that and so yeah that's how we move like it's a movement like as you mentioned yeah so the the group is aging as individual artists we are aging and age brings a lot of things and it also takes some things away so Think that's really it. So, so now, now looking at it from um, the age, um, young perspective, is was there a target? Do you? How many years is the collection? Can you come again? How many? Can you come again? How many years is the collective? Two years. Yeah. yeah. Three years. Okay. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> from, from, from the point you started as a collective to now, I don't know. Yeah. Do you think you have exceeded your your goals? No, nah, no, uh, no, 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 at no, all. Yeah, this is just really, the beginning of things. Yeah, really. yeah I think you are just. You guys had even way bigger. Yeah, way bigger. <laughs> way, way bigger. Hey, so, um, Omon, where you know? Omon, you for now. Omon, you for now. Oh, let, let, let me give you an example. Yeah. If, I talk, <laughs> if, I, if I ask a question from, if I talk to Ona from where I know, these people, <laughs> people where they were, so that, because people need to understand where this thing yeah. is. You, 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 yeah. you really need to understand where this thing is happening because as much... Today, when I Google as a black, I see um, New York Times, this, that, that, that. And then when, when, I, when I look on Instagram, I see New Dawn. So it really they give me perspective, say, when I know where on a day. You know, because a normal collective, the, the, the normal movement would be to put, quickly put the bigger uh, uh, um, publication there, you know, put whatever they happen. But the focus level of the group still be where at the Brigham to. You know, it's with the disruptive nature of the group, it's so focused. You know, so mm. that's why I, I really would like we could talk, we could look the last two years, you know, like just as soon as they hit on a on a benchmark, as soon as they meet on a goals, like how's it been the last two and a half years for you individually and as a collective. Um, maybe, Come on. Yeah. 
No, if, if someone wants to speak on it, they, they should. I, I, I talk, I talk to you. No, 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 no. If it's there, you're okay. now. You start because I'm glad you're going to go off on <laughs> Yeah, so you know what, yeah? I think when we, like, when we decided to do things in the beginning, it was like, holy grail, why so serious? Uh, the show, then vibes, truth or dare, like, Picasso night. But you know, like, when... Uh, when we're in school, when, when, when you're usually like in art school, you learn about like institution. So you learn about like, you know, uh, the gallery system, you learn about the museum space, you learn about non-profit spaces, you learn about like the market, you learn about the, the art school, you learn about, you know, alternative spaces that, you know, hold cultural events. What Asafu Black wanted to do is, you know, we, we, you, you don't always need to rely on someone else to get things done or to, you know, produce content or to produce cultural content, you know. We can be our own cultural producers and, like, you know, dictate what or how, you know, we can express our own, like, selves. It could, it could manifest in any way, like, you know, in programming, it could take any form. If it's an exhibition, then it's going to happen. If it's social work, it's going to happen. If it has to be, like, uh, sales or, you know, like a market-driven activity, it has to happen. If it has to be like, you know, a non-profit like project, it has to happen. It has to be an experimental project or something we want to like, you know, try and test out. It has to happen. So it's like, it's a, it's a really big goal. Like, our work is big. You know, like, our spectrum of what we want to do is very big. So Very wide. Very wide. So if we have the capability to do things at the moment, we do it. We take initiative immediately and do and get it done you know like we, we we don't we don't try to misuse opportunities at all like we capitalize on every small like you know opportunity we get to get things done yeah yeah that's 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 beautiful to hear anybody yeah. wants to add to that um, yeah, I just, this is yeah. from what he, see, he mentioned dictate and that's like the very strong thing i love about this group we want to dictate what we are doing and all that i see and you see, you asked a question earlier, and you, um, what do you call Larry and Jeffrey were even saying, we know rich and stuff like that. I, I believe <laughs> at the moment right now, distance is what is even slowing us down. Because if you give us yeah. a chance, you know, we, it's like we don't want to stop. We have so <laughs> much coming. We don't want to. I have this rush in me right now. I really can't move unless I move with like my collective. Because it's like we have to do it. And we have to. So right now, because we are in different locations, it's a bit slow. But it's like with that crowd, we still, we still use our ideas to make it happen. Because this is the age we are born in. You yeah. understand? And we know what is happening around us. So we use that to to make what we want to 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 dictate. Sorry, to dictate what we want and what we want to show out there. That's 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 beautiful. Thank you for giving me my next question. Um, so we're looking at distance, right? And I, this is not even about COVID, just normal distance. As individuals, we travel. As individuals, we, we move. As artists, we're moving. Now, uh, Larry, you are in Germany. Um, Nuna, you are in, you, you are in, Larry, you're in Frankfurt. Nuna, you are in London. Um, Scapa, you are in Accra. Jeffrey, you are in Accra. And, and how, how do we function like that? You know, in knowing that we want to produce, we want to create, we want to move as a collective. What are the new ways? What what are the what what technology? What what influences? How are you going to navigate? What is this time of distance teaching you people in terms of <laughs> making sure that um, the the collective is not affected by distance the way it affects other people? Yeah, Omo, you know, you know, you know something, yeah. Uh, I think, well, let me just say this. Uh, technology yeah, and the internet, it's, it's like a, I was just watching news on BBC yeah, and uh, Google and Facebook want to like, you know, uh, lay these like uh, uh, internet pipes like through like the entire Africa, the entire part of like Africa, like through all the countries. And one of the experts in like, you know, in Somalia said, Internet has, has become a human right. Everyone, everyone on this planet should have access to the internet. Because yeah. the internet is like, it's like the encyclopedia. Anything you want to find out, you can know it. 
can get it. If you're not in physical spaces, then you have to adapt. You have to find alternatives. You have to work around it. You have to make it happen. Because the, with the internet, everything is possible. I remember this morning, I was like taking a walk through like this uh, uh, trail in, in my area, in Roehampton. Roehampton is like this really like uh, forest, like, you know, area. Yeah. It's, 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 from, it's, 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 it's predominantly white. So it was like this morning, I was taking a stroll and I was, I was just like, I think it was Ba called me and we were talking about stuff. Like we, we call each other every time, like out of the blue, just talk about stuff. Maybe Ba is thinking about something, we talk about it. So Ba called me, I was talking, I was like, let me, let me just call Larry and put Larry on so that we just like, you know, we just, we just don't miss this opportunity. So we are talking and we just realized, you know, we could, and in that moment, we, a new idea came up, how to make something happen. We wanted to create a video. We talked about this, we talked about this. We, you know, we just understood how, we could make it happen. And, we have, and we've made it happen now. Like, and we are still making it happen. So, you know, the internet shouldn't, like, I'm, I was sorry, or, or the distance between us shouldn't be, like, a concern. It should only be a concern when now we need to actually materialize things. We need to make things tangible, like, to, you know, see, to touch. Then that's even, you know, you have, like, ship, if we need to ship stuff, we ship it. If I need to make work, I'm currently collaborating with Larry to make, like to do this exhibition or some works he's making in Frankfurt now. And it was very simple. Like I made, I made the thing on my computer. I sent it to him. He also added some things to it and we are making it like, he's going to print it out or however he's going to do it. Then he's going to work on it. He gets it. Like Ban sent me this video from like uh, Kumase Abato. I worked on it. I added some things to it. Larry brought some ideas like, bro, I put it in a group. Everyone was like, this is cool. We are working on it. Like, then we move, you get it. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. if you have the internet, you have constant communication. If you, once you have communication, it's very key. You can, you know, express yourself anyhow. Then you find ways to make things happen. Uh, um, that, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's important for me because it, 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 it's coming. Because with this conversation, I don't know um, if, it's, it's, if it's very clear. Um, it's, it's been proven that one of your strongest point is transparency and open communication, right? Mm. And, and as someone who has worked with people on, on several uh, uh, um, projects and fields, that's one thing that's hard. You know, mm -hmm. that's one thing that is, it's a very hard thing to, to have, you know, because it, it comes back to Sometimes even just feeling like you, you as an individual are not putting your weight, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm trying to say it's, it might not even come from a bad place. It might even come from you yeah. feeling inferior, like, no, everybody is on their A game. I'm not, and you're not clear, you know? So it, it means that, um, you as a collective, you do, you make it comfortable for everybody to be vulnerable. Is that, is that, is that something that you see as a collective you practice yeah i feel so yeah yourself yeah okay. yeah yourself among like each other like you feel free to share things okay yeah yeah so there's vulnerability in yeah. the bar you don't like it's not it's not like a dominant thing that we think of really yeah. Well, a, a, a lot of a lot of things that you people do, you don't think of, but it's happening. <laughs> yeah, you know, life another, is so thing much. Is, another thing too is that yeah, very very like, true. Everyone everyone assumes a responsibility to do something, you yeah. know. So we don't really say, Scraper is in charge of this, Larry is in charge of this, Jeffrey is in charge of this. Like we know that Scraper Scraper is good with like you know social media. He knows how to like talk to people. Like he he has like beard gang like he he knows how to like be on video on camera like express himself so he he does those things like Jeffrey is always on Twitter so we so we're like like Jeffrey automatically assumed that or authority to like engage for the Twitter community with Asafo Black so he created an Asafo Black uh, Twitter page he's handling that by myself and Larry are doing like the Instagram like the emails like everyone knows what they are doing like. No one says, 
ah, today the scraper for do this, or, or today Larry has to do this. Now, nah. if scraper knows he can do something, he does it, or he comes and tells you guys, I know how to do it, I can do this, and he does it. You know, Jeffrey says, I know how to do this. Maybe I want to do like an apparel, but but bam, we brought up this idea to make like a, an apparel, like a a tote bag, and me, I don't, I don't know like the tailors and everything, so I wasn't really part of the conversation. Like. We just said, well, how do we need to, how, how do we make it happen? Or who knows those things? By and Larry and Jeffrey deal, deal in no tailors and like, you know, people who work with textile and stuff. And they make, and they made it happen. Like, I don't need to put a voice in it or to contribute necessarily in it. I trust oh. them to make those decisions for the entire collective. You get it. So it happened. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because I, I'm going back to uh, move, moving as a corporation. It's very interesting because um, on paper, like, mm -hmm. automatically everybody has assumed the position, right? So then yeah. you have a tote bag, right? And then the tote bag sells 1 million uh, CDs, mm -hmm. right? Is, is, is that also... Hey, try that tote bag there. I want some more. I want that tote bag. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bring that tote bag out. <laughs> one million tote bag, I swear. <laughs> and the tote bag Let's go. for one million CDs. Is, is that also something that is, is just known how that, that would function? It, I did. it means finance has never been... Um, something that you guys also um, have any kind of disagreement on? <laughs> nah. nah. I, I'm, I'm, I'll give you this example here. Yeah. When we are doing, uh, when Jeffrey and I were, was doing like Holy Grail here. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know how much Jeffrey earns or like his pocket money is or his budget is for like a term or a month or anything. But when we wanted to do the exhibition, we had to make it happen. So however we were going to get that money, I, mean, I remember I exhausted all my money. Like, like I was working at, for NSS, so I was getting my monthly pay, and I think I was doing like things on the side. You know, me, I'm a move boy, so I always get like small, small cash every time. So like, I get money like every time. When, when I get it, I use it, I put it into something to like create something, like not necessarily invest, but to create something, you know. Yeah. So when we're doing like Holy Grail, like both Jeffrey and I, our money had we had exhausted the money, like <laughs> zero. Zero. I remember the opening night, we had zero, but we were so happy. And I told and Jeffrey was like, Charlie, how we do how we go chop? And I was like, Charlie, bro, you don't know, like, bro, me, I don't know. You have rice and gary, so like you can eat me, you know yawa. But you know the funny yeah. thing, like when the exhibition was continuing, we we still made provisions for like uh what was that thing for like drinks and you know, like savories, those sort of things. So, so that when people come, they could still, like, feel comfortable and, you know, like, live, like, you know, stay a, a little bit long, interact with us, communicate, those sort of things. So, money, like, in all our exhibitions, like, if, if Scraper has to bring, or is the one who brings 10,000 CDs, and I'm the one who brings one CD, there's no problem, like, because we don't really, like, consider it as, I bought the most money, so I have to do the most, nah, if if we need to if we need to do it, it has to be done. Then we do it. Okay. Like everyone, everyone is very transparent yeah. to that. So like, yeah. You see, sometimes now from Luna's point, he's talking about investment and what what you invest into, what you do. You see, when it even yeah. comes to the tent, we everybody has their prices. You understand? There's no there's one thing I know from the group from the beginning. We we've always been vulnerable. We've always had our ego has always been at the same place where it is. So it's easy for us to communicate to call your friend at any point in time just to vibe with the person. It's like, Luna calling me, I can't be mad at it because I know Luna and I know where he's coming from. You understand? So if Luna comes and asks me, Sky, what's your price? I give him my price. I know his price. Everybody knows each other's price. So when it comes to sharing, there's really no problem because you know what you invested in it. And it's like, even when you give the price, you have somebody like Luna or Larry asking you, are you sure this is what you want to stick with? You understand? Because they know the market. They know a different market than you know. Oh, this is the market I know. This is the market you know. Because it's like, as much as we are all, we all have something in common. We have vast, like there's this different stuff we, we show. 
apart from our work, you understand? Like, there's this different mindset, you understand? But, like, what our understanding of each other is so quick. There's never been one problem. That's one thing I know. We've never had a clash or a, okay, a negative downfall, something like that. You feel me? So, finances, I don't think mm-mm. it's, 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 we are so, I like Holika, we are so besh. <laughs> we are so besh. We are so besh that we are looking at something big. I don't know. We, we're coming to meet these guys. I've come to see that there's this light because they always say, you have, you have something like Larry say, we know rich where we don't want rich here. There's still something there. You understand? Eh? You know, you know there's something bigger than what you are looking for right now. Eh? Okay, so this is, this is that thing, that thing, that's where I want us to be running up on. Um, where, where is it? Where, where would it go? <laughs> Larry. Well, you said, where would it go? Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I want to say one thing first, before, before Larry comes. Yes. Eh? It has to become a religion. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. So you, Larry, go to continue. But I mean we are looking at creating like these communities like if just continue inspiring people. Yeah. Yeah. Continue inspiring people day in day out. Um, that's where that's where we are heading. We yeah, like inspiring the world, inspiring people to take care of their environment, inspiring people to take care of themselves, inspiring people to get closer to each other. Like that's that's the whole thing. Like we have a lot. Of, that's why we say we have a lot of work to do. Yes. It, yeah. It's amazing. Listen, me, I get my own. You understand? And so, so this one is not about me because when I meet young people like myself, you know, that come from the generation that is said to not be a serious generation, right? And then I meet people with a certain focus, certain tenacity, certain will. The question is, like, why, how, where? And, and, and I think you saying it has to be religion actually just cements everything. Because everything. really, nothing is really clearly explainable. You know, because then I'll be asking, okay, how did the six of you come together to form this Voltron? You know, because at the end of the day, uh, who is who? You know, it's like, Individually, you are all inter, inter, interwoven within each other's practice, within each other's personality as, as, as this formation. So it does make sense for you to say religion. But then, um, what, what, where, do you, where do you think, where do you think Asafo Black is in 10 years? <laughs> Ten years. Hmm. Some people go don't marry. Some people feed on bonds. Some people feed on you know. All but, that will happen, yeah. But I think. Let me see. <laughs> this this be tough. Bro. Yeah, this be tough. <laughs> this be really tough. It be tough. Man. Look, oh, wait, I don't tough. know. Like maybe I can say something for Africa or something. Okay. Yeah, Larry. Larry, what's what? Yeah, we will be living in a better place. That's what I can say. Ten years from now. Okay. Mm. Yeah, we are hope, me, we are optimistic about the future. We will be living in a better place. Let me see yeah. something. You see about this group, yeah. I've noticed one thing, yeah. The idea is one thing, you know, but the action and the action is everything. You understand? So it's like. You see the way you say, what, what will we do in like the next 10 years? That's like, it's still a vision in the head. <laughs> we are strong on the action we want to do tomorrow. You understand? Yeah, like, yeah. my mind strong on what action we want to do from now to the end. That, that vision for 10 years will come according to what we do tomorrow 
Yeah. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. I've, like a... <laughs> yes. I've loved I've loved this conversation. I hope you will like the conversation too. I hope yeah. I hope to have the same conversation physically with everybody. You know, I, I really hope for that. But my my final question, love and love and duty. I, I would like to make each person tackle these two. Love and duty. Separate together, you choose one, you throw both away, you carry the two. Which one? Love and duty. Larry, you can start. What, you say? Love. And oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't come. Yeah, the question is about love and beauty. Duty. Yeah, love beauty. <laughs> what? 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 You say what? Love. <laughs> like you say beauty. Love. Beauty. Love and duty. Duty. Love and duty. Okay. Okay. Not. I'm not asking any other thing. I just say love and duty. You the carry the two. Which one you go choose? Love. Love surpasses all. Not, not, yeah. not, not okay. Um, scrapper. Yeah. Me, I think. Scraper. Scraper. I actually. Yeah. Um, I feel, I, I feel the two goes together, yeah. I feel, let me put yeah. this like this. This is how I see it, yeah. Love is like the child, yeah, and duty is like the parent. You understand? You 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 want that freedom as a child to do what you want, but you also need that duty as a parent to put it in order. You understand? Uh -huh. So for me, that's all I can see. You understand? If I if I have to put it right now in my head, this is how I'm fishing it. A child love. You want to love as a child. You want to be carefree. You want to have that freedom as a child, but you also need that parent to put you in order. You understand? Like. Not not control totally all your life, but like at least making sure you wait in the front small, make you see whether you go like jump them or you go like continue or you go pass them. Yeah. I feel that's how it is for me with law, love and duty. That's dope. Um, Jeffrey, yeah, me, I think uh, love and duty goes uh, together because like you can love something, but if you're not willing to work hard for the love. I don't think you, you deserve it. And duty is to work hard for something. That's what I know duty of. So I believe the two go hand in hand. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to work hard at love. Mm. <laughs> so now watch the top data. What did they watch now? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Like maybe if not that they watch love and duty. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, you mentioned love then duty. My mind goes somewhere, but yeah, some very cynical place. But yeah, you if you meet in person, you go. But yeah, yeah like seriously, uh, for me it's love. Like it's love, Charlie. Like it's love. You know, one thing. Let, let me let me give you one ex one experience. Like that experience, I know I know I forget or, or or forget when Jeffrey and I were in the room. Yeah. And we went broke. At Jeff, you you dekai. Hi, bro. I can never forget. Broke. You know, and 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 there wasn't a moment where Jeffrey was like sad or annoyed that his money had finished, or me too. I was annoyed. Like we didn't know where the next money was coming from. Like, after, and we, you know, we have a lot of friends. So like, today someone can just come and call us. Let's go out to eat. And even our friends, like, were very selfless. Like, would give us like a, a ride to go and buy stuff. Came to paint with us, like, organize things. You know, if you have love, yeah, I don't think you need a certain responsibility or that word duty. Duty, I don't know, I'm trying to think, but if you if you love something or you love someone, it surpasses duty. Like, man, you do it automatically. And me, at that moment, like, in that point, me, we were broke, like, even taking, like, small one or, or even... Or, like someone CD safe and take trot trot to school safe, then we don't get. But we we had to get by. Like we got by. And we did things and we are so excited. Like Larry was so involved. Scraper was so involved in everything we did. So like it go happen. You get it. So for me, it's love. Yeah. If you love something and you love someone, bro, everything is everything is possible. 
Yeah, man. That's it's that's a past order. That's that's beautiful. Uh, for me, yeah. as a black, as a black for me is is just love in manifestation. You know, mm. uh, the, the 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 amount of love that is shown through the way you guys move is it's it's just it's really really deep. And and I just wish that you keep that love and and you stay firm on that foundation. Thank you guys. Really, really thanks, good. thanks very much. So, Omar, what should you go chop right now? Yeah, you <laughs> ask your question. Wait, 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 wait. Una fi ask your question actually. Maybe four yeah. questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Ask your question. Yeah. yeah. I said, what should you go chop right now? Um, nothing to chop, but I, I will, I will make dinner, definitely. Yeah. Well, what you, what you go chop? Um, me. What's I, on the menu? Um, I never know, but I, I, maybe I will make some. Um, Sweet potato and plantain. Yes. Yeah. They're contour based, you. Uh, not contour, but a different type of vegetable. Yeah, I for I for come I for come house I for come house. You need to come once you day once you yeah. day. Yeah. You need to come. If if we yeah, for come you, house. Make we come because I love sharp you. sharp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bro. Thanks for having oh, us. Yeah. yeah. One more minute. I get question. Yeah. I get a question. Yeah. You know, I, I always wanted to ask, like, you know, as creatives here, you know, most of us don't have like a title, like yeah. doctor, pharmacist, lawyer, policeman. Yeah. We we all have a certain sense of like uh responsibility. We have to make something happen. We have a common goal. There's a certain common goal, like a it passes through every creative, yeah. Yeah. And I see that in YouTube, but what exactly do they do? Why do they do them? Uh, so the first question is, what exactly do you do? And why do you do it? You can't really pinpoint what I do, you understand? Because <laughs> um, exactly, I, I follow spirit. And, and my, intuitions, my intuition actually don't guide me from Kidi to now. You know? yeah. uh, obviously, mistake has been made and, and also certain sacrifices. But... Not really. For me, I feel like now the core of it has always been is about story and narrative. Like, mm -hmm. um, so music, creating events, and, and, and just moving. For me, it has always been that there, there is something else. You know, my, my push every day is that there is something else. Where I come yeah. from, the city where I was born, um, if I take you there, where I grew up, I did not grow up rich. If I take you there, you know, there, there is an announcement of people dying every day. There's an, it's, it's so many things. Violence, everything that you can think of. Love, hate, is heightened where I was born. But to be where I am now is because of that thing. There is something else, you know? And now I know what that is. It's, it's our identity. It's, it's who we are. It's, it's what we live here. You know, it's the people that come way before us, you know, and, and it's love. I love myself so much that uh, I am willing to do exactly what my mind or my heart tells me, you know, and, and that's it. That's what wakes me up every day. But now, now, for, for the last 10, 12 years, Charlie, you know, I did do everything. But now, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think, my my focus now is very clear. I, I still do so many things. My focus now is I am building a collection of black African and everybody within that intersection. You know, I'm mm. building a contemporary collection of conversations, you know, because now I, I want to build a collection of thousands of conversations so that physically you can physically or virtually you can walk in and see a collection of just who we are, because we are so we are so unique, we are so different. When people see Africa or black, it just it, it's so narrow, and that's where stereotypes come from, prejudice right. and all of those stuff. And and I feel like no, we are so fucking unique, so different, so complex. You know, we are so complex to just to just reduce us to this. You know, so that's my work now. You know, gathering these stories. That's good. That's good. So, um, you, 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 you talk about some. What do you regret doing? Like, 
you think some of your mistakes uh, really affected you or, or made you learn or what, what, how, how it be? So I don't regret anything, you know, um, because I feel say mistake, no mistake, really where I am right now, everything, the good, the bad, ugly brought me here. But I feel yeah. I'm a very conscious, I'm a very, very conscious person. If I make mistake, um, I'm, I'm one person where everybody where I feel say I make mistake, I don't go back to them, I don't apologize, you know? Um, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want? Apologize. Yeah. He apologizes. Okay, yeah. I get, I get. Yeah. Oh, continue. I don't, I don't go there and say, oh, I feel say I make mistake here and here, you know? Um, but also, mistakes not really always for me. Just situational mistakes, you know. Yeah. Maybe you need to work with somebody where you're not supposed to work with, you know. But you need you need that thing to happen for you to know. Say, oh, okay, this type of people are not supposed to work with, you know. And 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 those those types of mistakes, time and space. I believe in time and space, you know. Like yeah. everything must happen. For something to 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 show itself, um, yeah, yeah. So not not necessarily me per se making mistakes, uh, which I I do, you know, because I feel like I'm a working contradiction. Uh, I I might be very strong on something today, but because of my freedom tomorrow, I might feel it this different way. But I'm not ashamed to say, yesterday I said this, but today I feel it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I don't really speak to you about it. This one you hold your bed and just I don't say it's something they call. <laughs> <laughs> so my omo my, my omo come from Benin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I what, what? I still don't think for Ghana, I beg. I just and I'm like this now. Ghana Jollof, Ninja Jollof, which are you go carry? I don't really care because I feel say <laughs> that be that be that be um every time I see this conversation, well, even true comedy, I feel say yeah. that, be, that be one of the things where they say they divide us, you know, like <laughs> like just the same thing. Well, because it's if it be like joke, but then when you look at um, this be the reason why we feel say airway will be this, gun be that. Uh, uh, that bunny be this, you will be this, it will be this. It, it, so, like, for for we to achieve this thing with um, Larry talk in terms of Africa, like, we must begin to see between these borders and lines because they've been invisible, you know. So, I know they, I know they, I don't really they care about all those all those kind of things at all. Yeah, bless up. I say then I want to also ask about. Um, when do we look for the next Asa Bakun? Um, so are you, are, you, are you working with that yeah, definitely, as well? Definitely. Um, so you guys know that I'm going to work with you guys eventually on some things for Asa Bakun. But um, we, are, we are talking now uh, because of Corona. Uh, we have to make its decisions, you know, because Asa Bakun happens first quarter. Um, so we'll be announcing very soon if we're going to have a physical event or a virtual event, but there will be something. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah sure. we look forward. We look forward to that. Let's work, let's work, let's work. <laughs> Me and you guys yeah. will never really understand the things we're going yeah. to do. Uh, seriously. Let's work, let's work, let's work. Yeah, yeah. Let's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, yeah, yeah, yeah. love, love Puna energy, definitely. Not sure. of you, like, as as a for black, you know the the unknown members and the known members. I just love every the energy that they give. Thank you very much for this one. Bless up, bless Thank up. You Thank much, you, everyone. Thanks. All right.